This video is sponsored by Astra. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a WordPress website with the Astra theme. It's bold and highly customizable, including an about section, a pricing table, a photo gallery, and a testimonial section. I'm even going to show you how to add a second page to create a contact form for your website. This entire website was made using Astra and a super easy to use drag and drop page builder called Elementor. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on Create a Pro Website. My name is Levi Hagen and I'll be walking you through this tutorial step by step. Now here at Create a Pro Website, we're dedicated to showing you how to build your own website and how to start making money online. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to check out the rest of our videos to see what I'm talking about. Today's video is aimed towards the absolute beginner of web design. If you've never created a website before, don't worry. We're making the entire website using a super easy to use drag and drop page builder. So you don't need any previous experience or knowledge of coding. Chances are you've already heard about this theme because it's highly recommended as one of the fastest WordPress themes. And I would agree. Astra is a bloat free theme that is continuously working on improving its speed, which helps your load time for your site. This in turn will be a bonus to your site's SEO. I also recommend Astra because of how powerful it can be and it's easy and intuitive to use. Personally, I think it's great for web design beginners and seasoned freelancers, and I'll explain why in the video. During this tutorial, you can use the right and left arrow keys to go forward or backward by five seconds. I also put timestamps of this video down in the description so you can skip ahead or go back at any time. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get started with step number one, which is to get a domain name and web hosting. A domain name is just the address to your website. It's what people will enter into the search bar to find your site. So something like yourwebsite.com. And web hosting is just renting space on a server somewhere that's connected to the internet so that you can store all of your media and files on a website. There are web hosting companies that have buildings full of these servers, and they also offer you 24 seven support in case anything happens to your website. If you want to own your very own website and have a custom domain name for it, then you have to purchase your own web hosting, which I'll show you how to do in this tutorial. And I'm also gonna give you a massive discount on it. Yes, you can get a free website, but it comes with a lot of limitations. Like you don't own your domain name. It'll be something like yourwebsite.wix.com or squarespace.com or whoever's hosting the website. It could even be a random string of numbers and letters that you don't get to choose. You also can't upload new themes in order to customize your website exactly the way you want. You can't upload plugins to increase the functionality of your website. You can't monetize your website with ads in order to make money from it. And finally, your website could be deleted at any time because you don't technically own it. For these reasons, I recommend web hosting because it places you in control. So in order to get your very own domain name and web hosting, just click on the very first link in the description or go to createaprowebsite.com slash hosting. And it'll take you to a page that looks like this. By clicking on my affiliate link, which I receive a commission from, you'll also receive that discount on your web hosting plan. So I strongly recommend it. Now, once you're on this landing page that we have with HostGator, you can just click on the buy now button right here. And you'll see the three different hosting plans we have. We've got the hatchling plan, which is the smallest one. And then we also have the baby plan and then the business plan, which is the biggest one. And so for the hatchling plan, this is the one that I'm going to use for this tutorial. And it's also the one that I recommend for anybody who's a beginner to web design. It gives you all of the essentials. You've got a single website that you can use. You have a free SSL certificate. So now your website is secure. And then you also get the domain name included. And then of course, if you go up in plans like the baby plan or the business plan, that's where you get like the unlimited websites and a whole bunch of other stuff. But for today, again, I'm just going to stick to the hatchling plan. So I'll just click on buy now. And from here, this is where we get to choose our very own custom domain name. If you already have your own domain name, you'll just go to this tab. But for this tutorial, I'm going to create my own. So I'll try something like Justin Fowley Fitness and then click outside of the box. And you'll see that when the search bar highlights green, that's when you know that your domain name is free and available and you're good to go. Now over here, you can choose between a .com or any of these other options. And you can see down below that you've got .club, .site, .net, whatever you want to do. I personally recommend a .com because it's the most professional looking and it's also the one that most people will search when they're looking for a website. So I'm going to stick to .com and then Justin Fowley Fitness. Now if it highlights red, that means that that actual domain name is paid for and in use. And so somebody else has it. So you'll have to try different variations on your domain name. 
Okay, so now that my domain name is secure, I can scroll on down and go to the next one, which is domain privacy protection. Now this is really important. Domain privacy protection protects or hides your personal information from telemarketers or solicitors or things like that. It basically puts you in a protected seat so that no one has access to your personal information. Sometimes what'll happen is you'll get phone calls and emails from telemarketers with you know different services for your website and it gets kind of annoying having to ignore all those. So I always use the domain privacy protection. It just protects your information. So just make sure that that box is checked. And of course, if you don't want the protection, you can just uncheck the box right here. So number two for the hosting is to choose a hosting plan. And again, uh, they let you choose between the hatchling baby or business, but I'm gonna stick to the hatchling plan. And then you can choose your billing cycle. So right now it's set to 36 months, but I can choose 12 months or one month or whatever you wanna do. Now, as you can see, the 36 months, if you pay for the biggest month uh, plan, then you get the biggest discount. So it's 61% off, but if you go with one month, it's only 30% off. Now, keep in mind, you're paying for all of these months up front. So if I select 36 months and scroll down, you'll see that my bill is 170. But if I only wanna pay for one month right now up front, then you'll see that it goes down to 80. So that's a pretty big difference. It's almost $100 off. So I'll go back up here. Now I'm gonna choose the one month, but if you want, you'll see that your domain registration right here is for one year. And so you could do the 12 months if you wanted to, and then just have your billing and your domain name both being paid at the same time. But it's completely up to you. You're just choosing how often you wanna pay for your monthly or bi-monthly or yearly plan. And so I'm gonna choose the month plan. And then next we've got create your HostGator account. And so this is pretty simple. You're just creating an account with HostGator just as a hosting provider. So this is important to remember. But as you can see, it's just your regular email, password, and security pin. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Perfect. And now you can see that step number four is to enter in your billing information. And this is pretty simple. You can use credit card or PayPal. Uh, I'm going to stick to credit card and enter in my personal information. So I'll see you guys in just a second. And then we'll talk about step number five, which is the additional services. All right, so now we've got the additional services section and you can see that we've got the site lock essentials and the site backup checked and that's $2 a month, but billed annually. So it's $23 and $23 right here. I'm actually gonna uncheck both of these because I've got videos on the channel that show you how to back up your site and how to do site lock essentials as well. So you guys can go ahead and check those out. But of course, if you wanna leave them checked, you can, it's completely up to you. Now scroll on down for step number five, which is enter your coupon code. And so create a pro website is the coupon code. If you went to the link that I have in the description, createaprowebsite.com slash hosting, this will automatically be inserted. But if it isn't, just make sure you put in that coupon code because that's how you get that discount. Now that's also my affiliate link. So I receive a commission, but it's kind of a win-win because we both get a discount and I get paid for it. And so number six is order details. And so you just get to review your order. And so you can see the domain registration for my domain for one year went from $17.99 all the way down to $4.99. So that's that big discount that I was talking about. And then you've got your hatchling plan for one month went from $10 down to seven. So there's my discount again. And then the hosting add-ons, which is $14.95, that's that domain privacy protection that I signed up for. So that's pretty good too. And it comes out to $29.10. So that's pretty cheap for your first website. So it's pretty good. Click on this box to agree to terms of service cancellation and privacy and click checkout now. And HostGator is going to take a second to set up your account, so we'll just give it a minute. Perfect. Now that HostGator has finished setting up our account, we can go ahead and click on View Dashboard. All right, and now that we're on the dashboard, if you have multiple domain names, you'll see them here. But as you can see, we've got Justin Fowley Fitness right here. And so this is the most recent domain name that we just set up. And so now that we're on our HostGator dashboard, we can go ahead and move on to step number two, which is to install WordPress. Now, in order to install WordPress, HostGator makes it very easy. You just go right over here to the control panel right here and then click on install WordPress. All right. And now you can see right here, I'll just click on install now. And it's going to take us to the HostGator WordPress setup. And so under software setup, you just want to make sure that it's installing to the correct domain name which if you have multiple domain names, be sure to click on the actual install WordPress for that domain name. Cause you can see that I've got other domain names and I could click install here. So make sure it's on the correct one. I'll go back and it is. And if it isn't, you can click on the drop down and just choose a different one. And then you also want to make sure that you're downloading the correct version of WordPress, the most up to date, which as you can see, we're installing 5.8, which is the newest one. Scroll on down and we've got site settings. 
And we've got the site name, which is my blog, and the site description, which is my WordPress blog. But if I were to actually search HostGator, you'll see that this is the site title right here, and then this is the site description right below. And so that's what we're setting up right now. And of course, you can change this anytime later on when we're editing the website, but they're allowing you the option to set it up right now, so I will. Perfect, Justin Fowley Fitness, which is a totally random name that I just set up because I'm just pretending to be building a website for this man. And then we've got site description. All right. All right, and then over here we've got the admin account. And the admin account is incredibly important because this is how you're going to log into your website to edit it every single time. And so you have to remember this username and password, so I'm going to go ahead and set it up right now. I'm just going to make my username my name, so Levi, but you can set up your username however you want. And then we've got the admin password, which I'm going to go ahead and type in my own right now. Perfect. And then we've got the admin email address, so I'm going to enter in mine right now. Perfect and we can scroll on down. And now it gives us the option to choose a language, which I speak English, so I'm just gonna leave it on that, but you can of course choose whatever language you want. And then for the rest of it, which is to select plugins, a theme, or advanced options, what I'm gonna do is skip it and just go straight on down to install right here. Because I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of this in depth in the next few steps. And now WordPress is gonna take a second to install onto your website, so it could take anywhere from three to four minutes right here. So we'll just wait. All right, so now we have WordPress successfully installed and we're good to go. Now it's going to give you something called the administrative URL. This is very important, just as important as the admin username and password, because in tandem, all three of them are going to be what you use every time you want to edit your website. It's really easy to remember. It's just your new domain name. So justinfowleyfitness.com slash WP for WordPress dash admin because you're the admin. So I usually just remember this little back part right here, WP dash admin, and then that'll allow me to log in every time. If you don't think you'll be able to remember it, another thing you can do is just open it up on a new tab and then save it as a bookmark, just like this. So now that we have it, let's go ahead and actually visit our website. Perfect, so if it shows you something like this, your connection is not private or it says that this doesn't exist or anything else other than a login page, then you know that your site needs to propagate first. Now, propagation is where HostGator has to send the new domain name that you just registered to every single server in the entire world to let everyone know that you just registered and now it's owned and live. Now, this process can take anywhere from just a few minutes to 30 minutes or an hour, and then sometimes it can take up to an entire day. So all you have to do is just keep coming back to your browser and hitting refresh, or just keep coming back here and clicking on your domain name, and eventually you'll come to a page that looks like this. So as soon as you get to a page that looks like this, you'll know that you're ready to log in and start editing. So I'm gonna log in right now, and it looks like my username is ready to go, so I'll type in my password. All right, and now we are in our WordPress dashboard, so we're ready to go. And now that we're here, we can move on to step number three, which is to install Astra. Now Astra is a WordPress theme, so we're gonna go over to the Appearance tab right here, and then go to Themes. And so I'm gonna open it up on a new tab just like this. And we can actually close out of these two tabs already. So I'm going to close out of both and then go to my themes tab. So just to show you guys what this one looks like, this is the active theme. It's default, just 2021. They literally just call it the year. Uh, but the 2021 default WordPress theme looks like this. Uh, to view your website, you go up to your name up here in the top, right click, and I'm going to open it on a new tab, or you can just click on it. So this is what our website looks like right now. And you can see it actually gives you a little pre preview on the theme uh, thumbnail there, but it's pretty basic, just mint green with black text. And so uh, it's really far from being done, of course. So let me show you what happens when we download Astra. So in order to do so, under themes, we're gonna go over to add new. And then from here, we'll go up to the search bar and search Astra, or you could just click on it right here. And so you'll see Astra is one of the most prevalent ones. So we'll click on install and activate. Now, WordPress has tons and tons of themes that you can download for free to customize your website, edit your header and footer, and much more. One theme sticks out to me far above all of the others for its surprisingly fast speeds, incredible customization capability, and ease of use. And this is the Astra theme. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner to web design or an expert web designer building different sites for different clients. I use Astra on almost all of my tutorials and websites because of how easy it is to use and how simple their interface is. This is especially important for beginners to web design. At the same time, Astra has a variety of features that you can use to heavily customize your header, 
pages, blogs, and your footer. Now, all that being said, we can go ahead and go back to the preview of our website and open it up on a new tab just to see how much it changed our site. And now you see it looks completely different. It's definitely far from being done, but now it's a little bit better looking. So I'm gonna close out of this guy. All right, so now that we have Astra installed, we can move on to step number four, which is to install plugins. Another reason that I appreciate the Astra theme so much is because of its accompanying plugin called Starter Templates by Astra. Now, Starter Templates is a plugin that we're gonna download for free, which gives us access to one of the biggest libraries of free premium website templates that we can use to speed up the process of building your site. So in order to install the plugins, we are gonna have to go over to the plugins tab right over here and then click on add new. Now we'll go over to the search bar right here and search starter templates, which you can see I search it all the time. So it pops up pretty quickly for me. And you'll see starter templates right here for Elementor. And so we'll just click on install now and activate. And it's gonna ask what kind of page builder we're using and we're gonna be using Elementor. So we'll just click on it right here. This is another area where I think Astra really excels in helping both beginners and experts of web design. Beginners don't have to create websites from scratch, which make things so much easier and experts can speed up the project delivery time by starting from templates and tailoring them to fit their client's needs. It's also a great way to get inspired for new web design ideas. The developers at Astra are even making sure to add new templates to their library every week, so you know that you're constantly getting new and professional templates. The developers over at Astra even include another fantastic feature where the templates are all inclusive. Now this means that you don't even have to go through the process of downloading all of the individual plugins or anything else for the website. All you have to do is download one plugin, and that's starter templates, choose the template that's right for you, and then click download. And that's all it takes. And just like that, Astra Starter Templates will automatically install and activate all of the pages as well as the plugins and starter content. It's that simple. So let me show you how we're gonna do that right now. You can go up to the top right here and instead of clicking on the all button, we can actually select a specific type of business. So if we want an e-commerce website, we can try selling different products like this. And then what we also can do is choose whether we want the free version or the premium version, which we can select free. And now these are all the free templates that we can use. You can also search by clicking on the search bar and typing in something like fitness and choose a filter based on what you search. All you have to do is download one plugin, choose the template that's right for you, then click download. And just like that, Astra Starter Templates will automatically install and activate all of the pages as well as the plugins and content. It's that simple. And just like that, everything's been imported, so we can go ahead and click on Visit Site and we'll be able to see what our website looks like now. All right, so this is our website. We've already downloaded the template. It already installs all of the actual content as well, so that's pretty cool. Scroll through and we've got some images in here. It looks like some of the stuff is missing, but we'll fill it in, so don't worry. Awesome. All right. So from here, I'm going to close out of this tab and close out of the starter templates tab because now we're going to go back to the dashboard. But now that we have everything installed, we can go ahead and move on to step number five, which is the actual Astra tutorial. Now, this is the part of the tutorial where we get to focus completely on Astra and we're going to use it to customize our navigation menu import our logos and site icons, and build a footer as well. The Astra theme constantly has their developers working hard to make adjustments to keep their themes updated and competitively functional. A great example of this would be one of their most recent updates, where they include a powerful header and footer builder. This is a fantastic addition, which gives you complete control over three different levels to a header. You get to customize where you can add multiple widgets using easy to use drag and drop interface. And this is the same for the footer builder as well. Not to worry, I'm gonna walk you through how to use both the header and footer builder as well. So let's get right into it. So now that we're back on the dashboard, I'm gonna go over to the appearance tab and then click on customize, but I'm gonna open it up on a new tab and then click on it right here. So first let's focus on the header builder and specifically we're gonna be focusing on the header menu first, the navigation menu. So I'm gonna go over to the header builder and then right now it's called primary menu. So you can click on the primary menu. From here, what we can do is change the width, which will make them closer or farther apart. We can add item dividers and stack on mobile, but that's, I'll get to that later. Also on the design tab is where we can change all of the coloring, the border radius. We've got background color, fonts, spacing, and all of that. But for now, I'm gonna leave it just like this. If we wanna actually edit the menu, we can go back out of the header builder and drop down to menus right here. 
and we've got the top navigation menu, which is this guy up here. It looks like it's already been created as part of the template, so that's very helpful, especially coming from the Astro team. But we can actually change whichever ones we want right here. So it looks like we've got a home button, an about button, training, rates, gallery. And as these buttons were clicked on, it'll take you to different portions of the website. So for instance, the about section, the training section, looks like hours or rates, and so that's what this is. And so you've got the rates. Uh, we've got the training gallery, which you can see gallery. Next will be clients. Here we go. Testimonials and so forth. So all of these individual buttons, if we click on it, are going to be what's called a custom link. And all it is is the URL, which is set to a hashtag and then what's actually titled. And so I'm going to be going over this pretty soon. Uh, we'll go over it when we get to the Elementor section, when we're actually building and editing this website to customize it to be our own. But for now, just remember the hashtag and the word home. And the same thing is for about me, you'll see hashtag about, and then rates is gonna be hashtag rates. It's pretty simple. We're gonna set all of those up. Now the last one, contact, what I'm actually gonna do is remove this one, and I'm gonna set it up as a specific button, and we're gonna set up a separate page for the contact form. So for contact, what I'm gonna do is click on it, drop down to the bottom and click on remove. And then what we can do is if you ever wanna add items to your navigation list, you can click on add items right here. And then we can choose between custom links, which is what every one of these is, or you can click on pages and it'll select from the different pages that you have, which right now we only have a home page and a sample page. If you had different posts in a blog, you could select the different posts, which it looks like there's a stock one right here, but I'm not gonna use it, and so on. Now what I'm gonna do is actually close out of add items because I'm not gonna add it to the list. What I'm actually gonna do is add a totally different widget to the side of this. So I'm gonna click on publish to save my work. And now this is live. So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit so my back button appears. And we're gonna go back twice and go to the header builder. And now that we're in the header builder, you can see that each individual item in the menu is actually a widget that we can move around. So you see we've got the header menu right here, primary menu. And we've got site identity and logo, which is our logo right here. And so if I wanted to move the logo to be in the center, all I have to do is click and drag it, just like this. And then just like that, you'll see that the logo moves to the center and it kind of crunches up my menu over here. So I could also move the menu to be in the center, but below it. So I've got three different levels to my header. So if I put it in the bottom level, now you'll see I've got a centered logo and then also a centered menu right below the logo. So that's pretty handy. But personally, I'm gonna leave it to be on the sides, just like this. So next what we're gonna do is actually add a widget and so all you have to do is click on this little plus button while hovering over the level that you want. And I'm gonna add a button. And now you can see the button was automatically placed on this side of the menu, but if it wasn't, you can just click and drag it to either side. We'll go over here and we'll click on the button and now we can edit it. And so the text I wanna to change to contact. And you'll see that the button actually says contact over here, so that's handy. And then I can change the link. Right now, it's uh, it looks like a different URL, so I'm just going to change it to a hashtag, which is essentially just a placeholder, so it's not going to go anywhere right now because we first have to create the contact page, and we'll get to that later. And then I'm also going to select Open on a new tab so that anytime someone clicks on this button, it's automatically going to open a new tab. From here, we can go to the Design tab, and we can use this tab to actually change the colors of this button and also the background color. And so, for instance, I could click on the normal color and I could choose kind of like a red color right here, which has already been saved. And so it looks like it's that. And now you can see the text color is that color. So I'm actually going to make it white at the beginning. And then when I hover over the button, what I actually want it to do is change it to that red color. And then for the background color, I'm going to change it to the red color. And then when I hover over it, I want it to change to white, just like this. So it kind of uh, it flips inversely. So now when I hover over the button, it's going to change from that red color to a white color, just like this. And you can, of course, choose the different colors as you want to. The next thing I'm going to do is actually go to a different tab, and I'm going to show you how to put in your own logo. So we're going to change this one right here. And I'm also going to show you guys how to create your own logo for free without having to download any software. So first, let's click Publish to save our work, just like this. And then we're going to go up to a new tab and search something called Logo Maker but without the E. And it's gonna take you to a page that looks like this. And so we can close out of this little mini video tutorial because I'm gonna show you how to use it and click out of those as well. 
So this is Logo Maker. It's really easy to use. Over here on the left hand side, we've got our basic functions like text, basic shapes, and the paint bucket. Over here on the right hand side, we've got the color wheel, so we can choose what color we want. We've got the saturation box, so we can go with fully saturated or all the way to gray. And then we've got the opacity right here. So right now it's fully opaque or we can make it transparent. Up here in the top left corner, we can click here and search from over a million different graphics for free. And so you can see that we've got tons and tons of different icons that you can use. And so I could search something like camera and just tons and tons of cameras are gonna pop up. Perfect. So I'm actually gonna clear camera out and search something called kettlebell. And from here we can scroll on through and choose whichever one we want. But I'm gonna use this one right here in the bottom corner. All right, so I've got my kettlebell right here. Next I'm gonna also search a dumbbell. And I think I'm gonna use this one right here. And we'll just move that over by dragging it over. Next, I'm going to add a text function, so I'll click on the text button right here, and I can type in something like Justin Fowley, and I'm going to do it in all caps, and we can move that up, and now I'm going to do one more text function, and I'm going to title it Fitness. So next, what I'm going to do is click on the text function right here, and I can actually change its font category and its font, and so I'm going to change it from simple and modern. I could go to anything. Uh, if I want to do pixel and monospace, and then search through those. These will be a lot of like computer techy looking ones. And then if I want to do handwriting, I can search through and look at a bunch of handwriting ones. But to be honest, I'm actually going to keep it on simple and modern. And I'm just going to use Archivo Black, just like this. And I think that looks fantastic. Next, I'm going to change its color to be the same color as my button up here. So I'm just going to go back to my tab over here and pull this color. So I'm going to copy it right here, Command C or Control C. And then I'll just paste it right here. All right, so I've got my, my color right here for Justin Fowley. And then for fitness, I'm actually just gonna change its color to black. So I'm gonna get, drag it down like this. Next, what I'm gonna do is click on fitness right here, and I'm gonna click on the styles button, and I can change things like line width, line height, or letter spacing. And I'm gonna increase the letter spacing for fitness to be really big. But I'm gonna shrink the text to be smaller just by clicking on this corner right here, and I can actually change its size. I'm actually going to increase the letter spacing to be maxed out. Perfect. All right, and I'll drag it to be centered under my text right here. Perfect. So I've got Justin Fowley Fitness. Next, I'm going to take my weight and put it right above. And I'll take my dumbbell and put it right below. Just like this. Now my dumbbell, or excuse me, my kettlebell, I'm actually gonna shrink to be a little bit smaller. Something like that, maybe up a little bit. And then my dumbbell also needs to be a lot smaller. And I'll put that bad boy right here. Perfect. Let's actually click on it and I can use my arrow keys to move it individually without having to drag it. So I'm gonna drag it down a little bit lower. And then the last thing I'm going to do is actually search just a line. And I'm going to use this one right here. I could also go to my basic shapes and click on line right here, but then I'd have to set both points like this. So instead of being able to drag this line, I have to move one line to be like this and then one point to be like this. And sometimes I think that's just more annoying. And so what I'm going to do is actually just delete it and use this one because it's its own actual item. So I can just twist it like this, just to uh, 45 degrees like this. And then I can put it right next to my eight kilogram weight and shrink it a little bit. And then what I can do is right click on it and say duplicate and then put something the exact same size and rotation on the other side, just like that. Perfect. So now I've got my logo. I think it looks pretty good. And so what I can do is actually highlight multiple things at the same time and move them around together if you want. And so if you want, you can make it a little bit bigger like this. And now we're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is click on the save logo icon right here, and this is how we save our logo for free. It's gonna ask if you want the high resolution file, and then you have to pay $19 for it, but I'm gonna say, no thanks, I'm just gonna take the low resolution file for free. And so you click like that, 
and it's going to download your logo. And so also what I recommend is highlighting the entire thing. And then go over here to Justin Fowley and Fitness, hold the control or command key and click on both of them so it diselects both of the text functions and then change everything else to white, just like this. Now you can't see it, but it's still there. This way, if we have our logo on a dark background, you can still see all of the weights and things. And I'm actually gonna change the fitness text as well. So one more time, click control, or excuse me, hold control or command, and then click on fitness and change it to white, just like this. I'll click save logo again. And no thanks, I'll take the free version. And then one last time, I'm gonna go back. Let's just change everything to black so you can see it again. I'm gonna remove the text functions. And actually, I'm gonna remove everything else, except for my eight kilogram weight. I'm just gonna increase its size just like this. And then I'm gonna pull out a square. And as you can see, my square is in front of the eight kilogram weight and I want it to be behind. And the way you do that is you go over to the layers tab and you drag the square below the clip art. And now my weight is actually in front of the square like this. I'm gonna make the square a little bit bigger and put the weight in front of it, just like that. And then I'm gonna take the color of the square and paste in that same red color, just like this. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is round out the corners of the square. And so I can go to the styles tab right here and I can change its roundness just like this. And so I'll make it like a rounded square, perfect. And so this is gonna be my site icon. And a site icon is actually this little guy right here. So for Logo Maker, it's their little logo icon. And then for HostGator, it's the little gator mascot. And so this is gonna be mine. So one more time, click Save Logo. And we'll say, no thanks, I'll take the free version. Perfect. And now we can close out of Logo Maker for good. And now that we're back in the customizer for Astra, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the back button right here. And now we're back in the header builder, as you can see. And if you're not in the header builder, just go back to header builder right here. We're gonna go over to the site identity loco. And so you can click on this button right here, or you can click on the widget, or you can hover over the logo and click on the blue pencil. All three places will take you to the exact same spot, but I'm gonna click right here. And now we're editing the logo. So I'm going to remove their logo and select my own. I'm gonna upload all three of the logos we just created. So in my Astro images, I've got all three of these right here. For the main logo, I'm gonna use my dark logo and click on select because that's my actual official logo. I'm gonna skip the cropping. Perfect, and you'll see it pop up right here. So that's good to go. Now you'll notice that it's dark on a dark background. And so it's almost like that's why I told us to create another white version of it. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and install that one right now. So anywhere where there's not a dark background, this one is gonna appear, but only on a transparent header, I want the white one to appear. And the way you do that is you go to customize transparent header right here, and then use a different logo for your transparent header because this is transparent. And so we're gonna say yes, and choose the logo right here. And it's actually in our media library now. We don't have to upload it because we already did. And so let's choose the white one. Perfect, and now you can see the logo crystal clear, and so we've got the white one right there. And you can also change the logo width, which is essentially the size, and you see you can drag it up and down, but I think it was good wherever it was. And now, lastly, we're gonna set up our own site icon, so I'm gonna click on the back button and go back to site identity and logo, and scroll on down to the very bottom, you'll see site icon right here. So I'm gonna click on it, click on my icon, and select. It'll ask if you wanna crop it. I'm gonna say skip cropping, but of course you can crop it however you want. Perfect, and now you can see that our site icon pops up just right. So I'm gonna click on publish to save my work. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that header menu is looking fantastic. So now we can go ahead, scroll up a little bit and click on the back button and click it one more time. Let's go ahead and focus on the footer builder now. So I'm gonna click on footer builder. It'll drop us down and now you can see the footer that we have right here. So the first thing is we can see at the very bottom, it looks identical to the header builder. And so we've got widget one, which looks like it's gonna be this guy, widget two will be this one, and widget three is gonna be this guy. And then we also have the copyright, which is right here, and the HTML, which is coding, but it looks like someone just says, powered by Justin Fowley Fitness. 
And so if we want to change this, we could actually click on the HTML one right here. So right now it says powered by this, and we could actually change site title to whatever we want. But I'm going to leave it just because this is an example and it's kind of irrelevant. You can also change the copyright by clicking on it right here. Or you can click on the widget and you can change the copyright from current year and site title to say whatever you want. Click on the back button here. So let's edit this first widget right here. And so we can do that by clicking on the actual widget. It's going to say, welcome to block widgets. And so we say, got it, because I'm going to show you guys how to use them. You're going to have a little live uh, demonstration of what it actually looks like. And so you click on it and you can edit it. And so we've got a title, which is blank right now. So as you can see, this one has a title. If I were to put a title here, it would move the logo down. So we're not going to put a title in. But what I am going to do is click right here and change this image. So I could click on edit or remove. And so I'm going to remove, go back in there. And right here, I'm going to insert my own image. So I'm going to click on add media. And I'm actually going to enter in my logo again the white one because it's on a dark background and it's going to be huge and so what we want to do is click on our image and edit it and from here we can change the alignment which right now there's none so we can say center it just like this and then we can change the size and so I'm going to move it down to a thumbnail size of 150 150 and we'll say update so I'm going to click on edit right here and you can see that the alignment is to the is uh, actually set to none, but I'm going to set it to center just so it naturally sets to the center. And you can change the size here, but it's actually going to crop your image based on what you select here. So I'm going to do it manually. So I'll click update right here. And I will go back into it. And you can click on your logo and actually just drag these arrow keys and shrink it like this. And then if you wait long enough, you'll see your preview pop up. And so I'm going to shrink it even more. Basically what I'm going for is I'm just trying to shrink my logo to where this guy is going to level out with this one right here. And so actually I think I can remove, yep, I can remove a space right below it. So let's delete this guy. So I'm going to click in front of the L and remove a space in between. And now you can see that my logo is right above the text. And so I'm actually just going to increase the size because now you can see there's a big difference. So I'm just playing with it. Perfect. So now I think that looks pretty good. The next thing we can do is edit the send a message one right here. So we can click on widget three and it's going to load a preview. Right now there's nothing below it, and so we're going to change that right now. But first I'm going to click on Publish to save my work because we've already made it this far. So next I'm going to actually click on the widget, and you can see that it's pulling an a WP Forms ID 152. And so it's actually a form that you create for your website. So let's go to WP Forms, and I'm going to show you guys how to pull the correct ID because this is an incorrect one. So we'll go back to the dashboard right here. That's why I always keep a dashboard tab open. If you guys have noticed, I always open things on a new tab. If you didn't leave this tab open, make sure you save your work first and then you click on this exit button and it'll take you back to the dashboard. But from here, what we're gonna do is drop down to WP Forms and we'll click on it. So I'm gonna open on a new tab and we've got contact form right here. So what I'm gonna do is click on edit and now we can actually edit the contact form. So what I want this to be is just a subscribe to newsletter form. And so actually I don't even need their name. So I'm going to click on the delete button right here. And I just want the email. So I'm also going to delete this message box right here. So you click on it and click on the delete button right here. So all I want is email and a submit button. So the first thing I want to do is change this guy. So I can click on the actual form and I can change the label right here. And so right now it says email. And what we can do then is go to the advanced tab and we can place a placeholder text and that's why you can see email in there with the asterisk. For instance, if I were to change this, now it shows that email does not have an asterisk, but I'm going to leave it because it means that it's required. And then you can also choose whether to hide the label or not because the label under the general tab is email. And so if I don't hide the label, it'll actually appear on top, which I think looks worse. So I'm not going to do that. So we've got the email tab right here. And then you can also change the field size right here to a different size, but I'm going to leave it as large. Now, next what I'm going to do is actually change the contact form name. So I'm going to click on the actual title and I can change the title to. So this is going to be my subscribe footer form. And so obviously you won't see the title on the actual footer, but this is just to let me know. It's a note to me saying that it's a uh, form for my footer for subscribing to the newsletter. Next, what we can do is actually in the settings tab, we can go to the notifications tab first. 
Now under the notifications tab, we've got the send to email address and you really want to make sure this is important. You set this to your admin email. Uh, this way, every time someone fills out this form and click submit, it's actually going to email you and not some email at example.com. So I can fill this out. So make sure that's your uh, admin email. And then the email subject line, this is what's going to appear in the actual subject. Uh, and you can change whatever it comes from. The from name is field zero, which is this guy right here. But you can also change it to... You can change it to the Justin Fowley Fitness Form or newsletter. Actually, let's do newsletter. So it's a newsletter subscription. And then the from email is example at email.com or email at example.com. You can change this to the same email if you want. Perfect. And so that's good to go. And we click on save. And then next we've got confirmations. And so anytime someone clicks submit, this is the message that's going to display. So thanks for contacting us. We'll be in touch shortly. And you can change this to be whatever you want but I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this one. So now we have our subscription to the newsletter right here. And so we'll go back to the customize tab and under send us a message, we can change the WP form ID. So under the WP forms tab that I did not close yet. And then now all we have to do is copy the short code right here. And so I'm just gonna copy it and paste it into our website. Go back to the customize tab and let's click publish real quick because now we have to refresh the page just so that it pulls the correct version of the form we just updated. We'll drop on down to the footer builder right here and we'll go to widget three. And then for send a message, we'll click on it and paste our short code right here. Perfect. And now you can see that the email form has pasted successfully. And that completes our footer. So I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to click on the back button twice and return to the main menu for Astra. So next what we can go over is the global tab. And if you click on it, we've got four things. We've got typography, colors, container, and buttons. And so the typography is pretty simple. You've got base and headings. You can click on typography and you can change the font, size, line height, and everything for all the fonts that is body font everywhere on the website. You've got the headings tab as well, and you can change all of the heading fonts as well. And so you can see that this was obviously this Teco font right here. And then you can change everything as well. Next, you've got the colors tab. And so you can see that we've got text color. And so that's that gray that we're seeing. And then we've got the theme color, which is this orangish color. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and paste that red color that we have that's already on our button. And then I can do the same thing for the link color. And that will change link colors and theme colors throughout the website to use this color instead. And we've got the same thing for heading color and background. And so this is actually how you change the underlying background of the website color. But it's set to transparent because we're not even using it. This is all Elementor right here. Click on the back button. Uh, we've got different containers that you can use, and so right now the layout is boxed, but you can change it to content boxed or full width or full width stretched. But this is irrelevant when you're using Elementor because we're actually setting all of this up, everything that you can see right here, using the page builder. So the last thing we can do is buttons, which right now the button color is set for this, which is why this one is orange. But if we were to actually change this to our red color, you'll see that it automatically changes to that color, and now we can change this one to be white. And so when I hover over it, it'll be white. So let's do the same thing that we did for this button to this button right here. And so we'll change the text color to be white at first, and then we'll change it to be our red color for the second, which is right there. So now it acts the same way as this button. We can also change things like the border width or color or something like that of the button, but I'm gonna leave all of this the same. And we'll just click on publish to save our work. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you guys in the Astra Themes customizer would be the homepage settings. So we drop right down to homepage settings right here. And right now, the homepage of your website is set to a static page and it's set to home. But basically what happens is when you build a website and we're going to build multiple pages, WordPress doesn't actually know which page you want it to use as the homepage. You have to tell it. So the way you do that is you go to the homepage settings right here. And instead of being latest posts or anything, you make sure it's static page and you can change this to whatever page you want. 
Right now, there's only two pages, the home page and the sample page. So let me show you what happens if there's multiple. For instance, if we go back to the dashboard and go to the pages tab, we can click on add new right here and I'll open it up on a new tab. Close out of this guy. And if I were to add just a random title, let's just say contact and then click on publish twice and close out of that tab. I'm just creating a random page just to show you guys and then come back to the customizer tab. We can refresh real quick and then under home page settings, you'll see that now I can choose contact as well. But of course we want our home page to actually be set as the home page. Now we're also going to be editing that contact page later. That's why I created it real quick. And that's everything that we're going to cover in the customizer tab for Astra. So now that we've completed it, we can move on to step number six, which is to edit your home page. So editing our home page is going to be on the dashboard. So I'm going to close out of both of these tabs right here. I'm going to go down to the pages tab and open it up on a new tab. And I can see the home page right here. We've also got privacy policy and a sample page, both by default. When you download WordPress, I can go ahead and trash both of those. So I can actually check both of these boxes right here. Bulk actions say move to trash and click apply. And now it's less cluttered. So we've just got our contact page and our home page. So the home page, I can go over to edit with Elementor and that's what I'm going to do. And now we're inside of Elementor. Now this is the page builder that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. It's really easy to use and it's 100% compatible with the Astra theme. So over here on the left hand side, we've got all of the different widgets that you can use to build your website. And if we scroll down, you'll see that you have a ton of them that you can use. And then over here, we've got the actual layout and preview of the website that we're building. And as I hover over different objects, you'll see that these boxes keep changing. So let me talk about this next. So we've got the layout of a website. And so if I move my cursor over, you'll see this blue box appear and it goes all the way around. And so this is called a section. It's basically the background. And so you've got multiple sections. So this is a section down here. This whole thing is a section and so on. Inside of a section, you can put what's called a column and it's this gray dotted box right here. And you can have multiple columns inside of a section. And then inside of columns, you can put multiple widgets, which is these little blue boxes. And you can click on the edit, which is right here. And you'll see that this is a heading widget because I just clicked on it. And if I were to click on this button right here, you'll see that it is a button. And this is also just a heading in the background over here. I'm actually going to hover over this big text right here, right click on it and say delete, because personally, I'm not going to use this faded background. If you guys wanted to see how it's used, I can show you guys really quickly. So I'll do that right now. You can click on it and you'll open up the heading and you can edit it in three different ways. We've got the content tab, the style tab, and the advanced tab. The content tab is where you're going to change things like its alignment. Um, let's see the title and things like that, which is actually just what you type on screen. And so I can keep typing and you'll see my text start to pop up. The style tab is where you change things like color, the typography, size, spacing. You can add shadow and stuff like that. And then the advanced tab is where you can add margins and padding. And we'll go over some of the other stuff as well, but we won't be touching too much on the advanced tab. Now, the way that they made this all faded into the background, just so you guys know, is they went to the advanced tab like this and they go to positioning and they set it as absolute. So instead of being stuck inside the column, they can actually drag this one wherever they want. And so I'm going to put it back over here. And then in addition, they went to the style tab and they changed the text color to something that's completely or almost completely transparent. So as you can see, I can make it completely opaque and it's basically the same as this one right here. And so that's how they did it. They just put it in the back and then turned the opacity all the way down. But again, if you guys were curious, you can keep it there. I'm going to go ahead and remove it because I don't want it. So I'm going to click on delete. So now I'm going to be editing my heading text right here as well as this button, but I'm going to be adding a few different ones as well. Now, before I actually customize this section, I want to make y'all's life a lot easier by showing you how to use the site settings within Elementor. So first, let's click on update to save our work, which is this green button right here, and that's going to make your site live. What we're going to be changing is global colors and global buttons. So let me show you guys what that looks like. If I were to click on this button right here and go to the style tab and actually change something like the text color or the color right here, You'll see that I can choose the default or I can click right here and actually choose it. But if I click on default, I've got these saved colors. So I don't have to keep going to the same red to try and find it. 
And so we're going to be setting those right now. I'm going to go over to this top left corner and click on this hamburger icon right here and go to site settings. Now that we're in the site settings, I'm going to go straight to global colors and you'll see all of those colors that I just showed you guys a second ago. I'm actually going to delete most of them and only keep about four or five of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is hover over it and you can actually click on delete global color and I'm going to say yes and I'm going to do that to a few more of them until I have five of them left. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one to be black. Then I'm going to change this one to be white. I'll change this one to be that red color that we already have set for all of the buttons and for our logo. And so I'm going to paste that because I still have it on my clipboard. And then I'm going to go to this accent color here and I'll change it to like a light gray. And I'll change this one to a darker gray. Something like this. Perfect. Don't worry about these text functions right here. You don't have to change them, but if you want to, you, all you have to do is click on them and you can actually type whatever you want. If you ever want to add another color after you deleted it, you could just click on the add color button and you'll have a brand new one that you can change. All right, so I'm going to click on update to save those settings. Perfect. Now what I'm going to show you guys how to do is also set up buttons and headings so that every time you drag in a new widget, it's already customized and ready to go. Now it's already done with this template, but I want to show you guys how to do it so that you can change your own website. So we're going to click the back button and we'll drop down to buttons first. Now basically what we're setting is anytime you drag the brand new button widget over, it's going to download a default gray looking button. Now with this template, again, it's already set to download this button, but we can change how our buttons look before we even drag them in. And so what I'm going to do is actually change it to be exactly like this button, but I don't like how it hovers white. This one is special because it's the contact and it's up top. I want this one to hover into a black color. So I'm going to change the text color to be white and the background color, which is this one right here, to be our red color. And you can see that those colors pop up now, so that's pretty helpful. So it basically looks just like this. And now when I go over to the hover setting, I'm going to change the text color to be white. And I'm going to change the hover color background to be black. And so now you'll see that this button actually did it. Actually, I want this to be the red color. So I'm going to change it from white to red. Perfect. I think that looks pretty cool. And especially kind of matching the dark theme of the website. I like how it hovers into that darker color. Cool. Back to the normal tab, everything looks good. So I'm gonna click on update to save my work. So now if I were to click on the back button and go back into my website and drag another button in, it's gonna automatically be formatted to do this same color scheme. And so it saves you a lot of work instead of having to individually change each color. So the last thing I wanna show you guys that you can do is go to the typography section right here and you can actually change all of the different text functions. I'm not gonna do it because again, it already comes stock with this template. They've already messed with these. But for instance, if I wanna change my heading one text, I could come over here and change the color. And every time I use a heading one function, it'll change it throughout the website, which is pretty useful when you actually have to build websites on a regular basis. But that's all the setting changes I'm gonna do for now. So I'm gonna click on this X button in the top corner. Perfect. So now just to show you guys, if I actually drag in another button, it's automatically going to be formatted to do that hover color just like this one. So that's pretty handy. But the existing button is already good enough for me. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually edit this text right here. And you can actually click straight on the page and start editing right here. Or you can type over here as well. It's the same thing. So I'm going to change it to Justin Fowley because this is Justin Fowley Fitness, just a fake name that I came up with. I'm going to be basically building his own fitness page as a personal trainer slash gym owner or whatever. And so we've got his name right here. So I'm going to edit this on the styling as well. So I'm going to go over to the style tab. I like the text color being white. I'm perfectly fine with that, but I'm going to change the typography around a little bit. I might increase the size just a little bit. So I'm going to drag it over here, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go over to the letter spacing and increase it just a smidge. Just a little bit, just like that. Actually, I might decrease the size a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is actually add some more titles right underneath it. So I'm going to go over to the Rubik's Cube icon, and this will bring me back to my widgets. And I'm going to add another heading text. 
And while I'm at it, I'll just add all of the widgets that I want to use. So I'm going to go back to the Rubik's Cube and add a text editor. And that should be it. So now I'm going to click on this one right here and edit this text. You can't really see it on the screen, so I'll do it over here. All right, so I've got personal trainer, entrepreneur, fitness expert. And these are just things that you could say about yourself, but this is just an example, of course. So I'm gonna go over to the style tab and then change the text color to something like white. So it matches the rest of it. Then I'll also change this one as well. And so I'm gonna leave it as the dummy text. I am gonna duplicate it a little bit just so that I have a little bit more text. Perfect. So I've got a little bit more. I'm gonna change the style to white. So now I'm gonna click on update to save my work. All right, so now that we've got our text and our button ready to go, I'm also gonna edit the background because obviously this is not a picture of Justin Fowley. So I'm gonna right click out here and click on edit the section, or you can click on the six dots right here and it'll take you to editing the background. First thing I'm gonna do is change the content width to be full width. And so now you'll see that my column now stretches to the far sides of the screen rather than being boxed like this and it's boxed in the center of the screen. So I want it to be full width. Now, really quickly, I'm gonna fix this text. I'm actually gonna go back to the column and click on edit column. So I just hover over the gray box and click on edit column. Let's go to the advanced tab and move this text around using margins and padding. So margins are space on the outside of the square and padding is space on the inside of the square. And so for the padding, I'm actually going to not touch, but I am gonna add some margins here. So on the left side, I'm gonna unlink the values and add 100. So now I've got a little bit of extra space over here. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually also edit this text function right here. So I'm gonna go to the text editor and I'm gonna go to the advanced tab and I'm gonna unlink the values together for the margin as well. And then on the right side, I actually want to remove space. So I'm gonna add margin to it. So I'm gonna add like 700 and that's what's scrunching my text over. Just so you guys can kind of imagine what I'm talking about here. All right, and so now that my text is kind of scrunched over, I can also make sure that this kind of fits in as well. I think it's competing with my title function here, and so I'm actually gonna edit it and just make it a little bit smaller. So I'll go to the style tab, typography, and I'll shrink its size a little bit. So something like this, perfect. And then click on update to save. You'll notice that I like to save my work a lot just to make sure I don't lose anything. Okay, so back to editing the section. So I'm just gonna right click out here in the empty space and uh, click on edit section or the six dots. And so now that we're full width and our text is kind of spaced correctly, let's go ahead and put that background image in there. And the way we do that is we go to the style tab and you'll see that the image that's used in the background is right here. And so all you do is click on it and you can change the image. And so I'm gonna go to upload files and select my own files here. And then I can choose from all of my images. I'm going to use this one right here as my hero image and click on open. Perfect. And then I'm going to click on insert my media. Perfect. And now that image is placed in the background. It looks really cool, especially for this fitness website. So let's also play with some of the image settings like position, attachment, and everything like that. So for the position, I'm actually going to change it to center center. And that way it focuses on the center of the image. It didn't really change anything, but just in case on different screen sizes, I wanna make sure it focuses on the center of the image and not the center right of the image, because that's what the position stands for. The attachment is set to fixed right now, which means if I scroll, it looks like it's stuck in the background and the website is scrolling over it. If I change it back to scroll, you'll see that the image goes with the actual website, but I'm gonna leave it as fixed because I think it looks way cooler like that. Perfect. And then also the size, make sure it's set to cover, which it should be because the template downloaded like that. But if it isn't set it to cover, if not, it might do something weird like zoom in like this. And so cover basically stretches it to fit full screen. Now, I also think that the background image is a little too bright, especially for my white text. So I'm gonna darken it up a little bit by adding a background overlay. And so for the background overlay, you can go to the normal and then classic color. I can choose a color, which I'm just gonna choose black. And right off the bat, it actually kind of did it perfectly. But if you want to change the opacity, you can choose to go a lot darker or a lot lighter. But I think 0.5 was perfect. Just like this. 
All right, so that's our website so far. So we've got Justin Fowley, personal trainer, entrepreneur, and fitness expert, a little bit of text that you could explain kind of like what you do, and then they click on the About button and it's gonna take them to the About section. So I'll click on Update to Save. Now the last thing that we have to edit in this Hero section would be the About Me button, and I wanna show you guys something pretty important. So I'm gonna right click on it and say Edit Button. The most important part about buttons is where they're gonna send your client to. And so that would be the link box right here. So when they click on this button, where is it going to take them? You can enter in your very own hyperlink if you wanted to take them somewhere else, of course. And so all you do is just clear this out and put in the hyperlink. And then when they click on the button, it'll send them there. What you can also do is set up different anchors on your website and have it set to where this button, like when I click on it right now, will take them to a specific anchor, which is the About Me section. And the way you do that is this. First, what you have to do is go to the section that you want and click on edit the section. Then you go to the advanced tab. Under the advanced tab, you'll see something called CSS ID. And so you're basically naming this section. You're giving it a nickname. And so I'm going to call it about, even though it's about me. So now that I've called it the about section, I can go back up here and go to my button. And as long as I put a hashtag in front of that about nickname, this button will now take them to the About section. The same thing happens with that header menu that we have up top. For instance, if I were to open up the website on a new tab, which by the way, if you ever want to preview your website, you just click on this little eyeball button right next to the update. You'll notice that this button is set up the exact same way. When I click on it, it takes you straight to the About section. And the same thing happens when I click on Training. It takes you to the personal training, uh, different things, and so on. And so that is the exact same thing. If I were to go to the Customize tab and go down to the Menus tab right here and then go into the Menu, you'll remember that I told you guys whenever you select a custom link like this, like the About Me, you'll see that the URL is the exact same thing that I'm talking about. It's a hashtag and then the nickname or the name of that actual section that we set. And so it looks like they did that for all of the other sections. So one's called Training, Rates, and they did that all the way down. So it's already good to go. So I'm going to close out of this guy and go back into Elementor. But anyways, that's how that button works right there. Perfect. So now our here section is set up. Let's go ahead and move on down to the next section, which is the About section. Now, I'm not going to do too much to this section. Of course, you can click here and type whatever you want, and you can change the title. And then this is just a, let's see, there's going to be an image right on top. Yeah, so I can edit this image right here and actually insert my own. And so all I did right there was just right click on this little space right here. And so there's a widget. I click edit image and then under content, I can choose the image and I'll upload my own file. And I'm going to use this one and then I'll click on insert media. Perfect. So now let's just pretend that this is Justin Fowley. I recognize that this is not the same guy, but you know, whatever <laughs> we can pretend. All right. So now I've placed the image there. These are just three individual logos that are already installed with the template. I'm not entirely sure why they don't load in, but all you got to do is click on edit right here and you can actually select it from your media library. And you can already select it from your media library. And so just insert all three of these right here. So I'll insert the first one. I'll insert the second one. Click on it, choose image and I'll insert the third one, just like that. Now, of course, these are just example logos, obviously, and so you'd wanna put you know, different awards that you have, you'd put those actual logos here, but I just wanted to show you that each individual one of these is just a tiny little image. And so all you gotta do is just click on it, and then you can choose the image whenever you want, and you can upload whatever you want as well. All right, so I think that does it for the About section. I think it looks pretty good, pretty standard. And so we'll scroll on down to the next one, Personal training, I'm honestly not going to touch because I think it looks just fine. But this is the part where you would say something like services section, and then you would list out all the different services you do. Scroll on down here, and we've got the hours of operation here. I actually like that background image, so I'm going to leave it, and I like how dark it is. But I am going to change this image right here. And so what you can do if you want is just delete this image and just have that circle be there with the background. And so, for instance, I can edit the image. I'm not actually going to click on delete because I already know this, but they actually merged these two images together. They've got this person and this circle in the same image. So you've got the girl as the actual image 
and if you go to the advanced tab and drop down to background you'll see that the circle is the background of this image widget it's not actually inside of the background itself and then unfortunately I can't just remove the image of the girl by clicking on this trash can right here because it's going to remove the background as well but what I can do is insert my own image and so if you guys don't have Photoshop or if you guys don't know how to use it or don't have a cutout like I do right here because I cut this out of an actual image then you can just leave it blank with no image on the side but I'm actually going to use the cutout because I did it just for the example so I'll click insert media and now you'll see that I've got my same guy that I have in this image right here is right there so that's pretty cool and then it also has that orange circle in the background so other than that this is where you would literally just click to type and you can change whatever hours of operation you want but I think it's perfectly fine the way it is for this example all right so I'm going to scroll on down to the next section and we've got the training rates now for this section again all I'm going to do is really just change the background images of these three but if you'll notice this is something kind of special so we've got a section right here right and so it covers the entire white background all the way around what we have then is a column and you can see the gray dotted line goes all the way around all of these boxes we've got a text function a divider and then another text function and right underneath it we've got something what's called an intersection and you'll see that this intersection actually surrounds all three of these squares and so an intersection if I go to the widgets tab right here by clicking on this icon is actually one of the basic functions and you can insert it and then you can place multiple things side by side it's kind of a a, uh, a workaround or a loophole to having multiple columns inside of columns and so that's kind of special and so that's what they did right here uh, so they did an inner column or excuse me an intersection and then they put three columns inside of it and then just put these images in the background and put some text in front of it and so you can change this text right here to be whatever you want and you can make your own pricing table just by changing all of this text and then also this is a button right here and so all you have to do is click on it and you can change register now to be whatever you want right here and then you can also change the link to go wherever you want and so if you've got a separate page for you know this specific service that's where you would put it but if you want to what you can do is just have these go to the contact page and the way you do that is if you remember earlier we actually created a page as the, called the contact page and so Elementor will automatically search from all of your pages so all you have to do is search contact and you'll see that contact is an actual page and so I can click on it and then it'll automatically insert your URL so that's pretty cool and so you could do that with all three of those buttons if you want to but I'm not gonna do any of that so I'll just click on update to save my work what I am going to do is change the background image of these. So I'm going to go over to the column right here, right click and say edit column. And then I'll go to the style tab and you'll see that this is the first image right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and click, go to upload files, select files. And I'm actually going to upload three images all at the same time. So I'm going to upload this one right here. I'm going to upload this one and this one. I'll click open perfect and then what I'm gonna do is select this one right here and I'll insert my media and now you'll notice that the image is actually focusing on the center right and so you can't see his face so I'm gonna switch it to center center and see how that looks actually that looks good so if I were to do center left it'd probably be too far yeah so you can't even see him so we'll do center center next I'm gonna edit this column go to the style tab and I'll change this image as well and we'll do the bicep curl one and click on insert media nice and that looks awesome by the way I think that's so cool and so then I've got position is center center and it looks perfect I'm gonna leave it just like that and then the last one I'll click on the edit column button go to the style tab and I'll change this image as well and you'll notice that that image is actually where I got this from I just cut it out so that's kind of funny perfect all right, so I think the training rate section looks pretty good. So let's move on to the next one, which is the training gallery. And so as you can see, it's actually a photo gallery. Uh, it's like an image carousel. So they keep sliding to the right, or excuse me, to the left. And then you can click on this arrow right here. And it's a bunch of images that for some reason, only one of them loaded in and the rest didn't. If you guys want to keep this one, you can. So I'll show you guys how to edit it, but I'm actually going to show you guys something that I think looks a little cooler in just a second. So if you guys wanted to keep this basic photo gallery or uh, image carousel, you'll just right click on it to edit it. 
and you'll see that there's seven images selected. This is like your your uh, your repository where all the images cycle through. And so you just click on it. And as you can see, the rest of them are blank. You click on this minus button and it just removes them. And so I'm gonna also remove this one. And then you can select whatever files you actually wanna add. So you can actually upload them from your computer or you can add to the gallery from your actual media library. And so just to give you guys an example, I'll just select these three right here and you'll see that they have checkboxes. I'll say add to gallery and insert. So that's how you insert your own images into the gallery. But honestly, what I'm gonna do is something a little bit different. So I'm actually gonna delete this entire widget right here and insert my own. Now, in order to insert this next widget that I'm gonna use, you actually have to download an extra plugin, which is completely free. So if you go back to your dashboard, and if you don't have your dashboard open on another tab, all you have to do is click on the hamburger icon and click on exit to WordPress dashboard. But I specifically wanna keep WordPress open. Go to your dashboard and we can drop down to plugins and click on add new. I'm gonna open it up on a new tab. From here, you can search Elementor and it's this one right here called Essential Add-ons for Elementor. It's a free widget that adds 40 additional free elements that you can use in Elementor. So that's pretty cool. And so just click on install and activate and then we can close out of this tab. Let's make sure that we update our work first just to save it. Perfect, so now that we saved our work, we can refresh the page. All right, and so now that Elementor has refreshed, it's pulled in all of those additional 40 widgets that we have. So if we scroll on down here, uh, back to the training section, I wanna show you guys, if you scroll down to the bottom, we've got the general tab, and underneath it, now we have essential add-ons, and here's all of the additional widgets that you can use. So that's pretty cool. We're actually gonna search for one, if you go back to the top, called Image Accordion. And there it is. I'm gonna drag it in right underneath like this. All right, and so now you'll see that every time you hover over one of these images, it does this cool little animation with text over it and everything. And so we can change all of these because each individual one is actually a tab right here. And you can click on it and change whatever you want and then close it back up. Change number two, three, and four. So I'm gonna show you guys how to change one of them. And then I'll do the rest of them off camera just to save you some time but I'm gonna do the exact same thing off camera that I do on camera. So let's change image accordion number one. So all we have to do is click on the image accordion and we can change the title and so that's what's gonna pop up and so it says image accordion number one. So I can change this to something like free weights. I can click here to choose the image and I'll upload it from my files. I'm gonna pick this one. I can also change the text underneath it if I want to. And so if I were to hover over it, you'll see this image accordion text right here. That's what this paragraph is, but I'm not gonna do it. And then I can scroll on down a little bit and that's pretty much it. If you wanna add a link, you can basically make this the equivalent of a button. And so when they click on it, it'll take them to a different page. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it without anything. And so that's what that hashtag is. It's just a placeholder. And that's it. All I'm gonna do is change the title and change the image. That's it for the rest of these. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Welcome back everybody. So I went ahead and entered in all of the individual ones. And again, all I did was I added an image and changed the title, that's it. And then if you wanna add an item, you just click add item. And that's how I added a few more, but I'm gonna click on exit to, to remove that last one. So now, as you can see, if you hover over, we've got free weights, we've got this cool picture for fitness lifestyle, personal training, regiments, cable equipment, and success culture. And so I think that looks pretty great. So I'm gonna click on update to save my work. And then I'm gonna move on to the next section. So now we've got the client section and it looks like we've got a whole bunch of image boxes that are actually missing the images, but they did come with the template. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in just for the example. But of course you'd wanna actually use real images of your clients or real testimonials. But all you gotta do is click on it because it's called an image box. So if I hover over it, you'll see it says edit image box. And so I'm gonna change my image and we'll go to upload files and select files. And then from here, I'm just gonna choose all of these to upload for now. Perfect, so I'm just gonna pick one. I think she looks like an Angelica because why not? Uh, let's do one for Ryan, which is next. Just 
just like this. So then I'm going to click on this one next and then click on choose image and choose one for Brandon and then click on insert. And then I'll click on Frida, click on edit. Perfect. Now, another thing I want to do is actually make sure that there's a little bit of extra space on this section. So I'm going to right click out here and click on edit section because I don't like how he's sticking out over the other section. I'll go to the advanced tab and under padding, I'm going to make sure that the bottom has 100 and that the top also has 100. Perfect. So now we've got space on the top and space on the bottom. Perfect. Now, lastly, what I want to do is actually make that orange circle just as bright as this one up top. And so the way I do that is they actually added it for the template as a uh, background overlay. And so I'm just going to right click and say edit the section. <laughs> well, I guess we're already editing the section. So I'm going to go back to the style tab. And then under background overlay, you'll see that they used an image instead of a color. And so all it is is the opacity is way down. And so I'm actually just going to make it completely opaque. And now you can see the orange behind them. I just think that looks better. And so that's the client section. And again, all you got to do is just add those images in here and then you can type out whatever you want here. And so now we're going to move on to the last part, which is the testimonial section. And so you've got what people say about me with a little uh, icon right here. So you can click on this actually. And you can choose from their entire library of icons if you want, but I think it's pretty obvious that the quotations is pretty appropriate. And you can type out whatever your customer actually says right here. The only thing I'm going to do is just change the background image. So I'm going to right click and say edit section, go to the style tab, you guys know the drill, and click on the image. And then I'm going to upload a very last image. And I'm going to use this one right here and say open, and then I'll say insert media. Perfect. And so now the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that the size is cover and that the position is center center. And so now it's focused on those weights and then also just darken it up a little bit. You guys know the drill. It's background overlay. And then for background type, I'll say classic. And of course I could use an image, but I'm going to use black and it looks like it automatically did it. And so I think that looks much better. So I'm going to click on update to save my work. Perfect. Now that we're done, let's go ahead and preview our work. So I'm going to click on preview changes and open it up on a new tab. Wow, this looks fantastic. So we've got our cool hero image here. We've got a button right here and all of our text. And it just looks absolutely incredible for a gym workout website. And so if they click on the about me button, it takes them down. Same thing if they were to click on any of these up here. And then we've got the personal training section. I think it looks fantastic. This really cool hours of operation thing training rates and then each one of these buttons you can set to take them somewhere else which this one takes them to a contact page if you guys remember and then we've got the training gallery with this super cool image accordion kind of thing our clients and then lastly the testimonial section and so now we've got this contact me form and uh, of course when we were editing the footer you guys know how to kind of change this text around and they've got this send a message right here but what we can do is also edit the contact page because we do have it as a separate page, which is completely blank at the moment. It looks like it automatically takes you to the actual Astra page. And so that's interesting. So I'm going to close out of this guy for now. It's because we didn't set a page. And so I'm going to close out of this one and then actually close out of Elementor. All right. So now that we finished editing the home page, we can move on to step number seven, which is to edit the contact page. So the same thing, in order to edit the contact page, we're going to go over to the pages tab and open it up on a new tab. And then normally, just like we did the home page, we would just go to the contact page that we created earlier and we would say edit with Elementor, which you can see it's not there right now. So we have to click edit and then click on edit with Elementor. But actually, I'm going to delete this page because I want to use a template to save us some time. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the trash button right here. And it'll remove that contact page from our list. Next, I'm going to go to the Appearance tab and then drop down to the Starter Templates tab right here and open it up on a new. Perfect. And now that we're in Starter Templates, I'm going to go up to the search bar and search something called Mountain and click on this one. And then just like we did at the beginning of the video, we could import the complete site or we could just select the contact page and import the contact page only. And so that's what we're going to do. So I can skip this first part right here and straight download the contact page. 
Perfect, and from here we could click on view template, but again, I'm actually just gonna go over to the pages tab. And now you'll see that we have the draft for Elementor. It's a contact page ready to go, and we can click on edit with Elementor. Now, one thing you'll see is that it's an actual draft. So if we click on quick edit, we can make sure that we change its status from draft to publish, and then click on update. Now this contact page is live on your website and everyone can see it. If you don't wanna do that just yet, you can always come back and click on publish later, but I thought, you know, might as well do it. So I'm gonna click on edit with Elementor right here, open it up on a new tab. I'll just close out of the pages one because I always like to have a dashboard to go back to. All right, everybody, now we're back in Elementor and this is gonna make things so much easier because all we have to edit really is just this hero section right here because the rest of the contact form looks pretty good. Um, I might change these to start out as black and then change to red when you hover over them, but other than that, I think it looks fantastic. And this map has a cool feature where you hover your mouse over it and it gains color, and then when you're not, it's black and white, so that's kind of cool. I'll show you guys how they did that later. So, first, let's edit this section. I'm going to go ahead and just right-click and say edit the section. Go over to the style tab, and I'm going to change that background image. And I'll click on upload files, select files, and I'm going to choose this image right here. All right, and then I'll click on insert media. And now I've got my image in the background. I can make sure that the positioning is center center. That's usually what I like to do, but if you want, actually, because it's kind of cutting off the bar and I think that's the main focus rather than, you know, his leg, uh, you could do bottom center, which it looks like it's kind of doing. And then also, if you want to really see the bottom of the image, you could change it to scroll and it'll move it up. And then if we change the positioning maybe, so that's one option for you, but actually I kind of like it on the fixed setting and I'll just make sure it's set to bottom center. And then that's the best I'm gonna get. And as I scroll, I can see different portions of the image. All right, and then next I'm gonna make sure I also put a background overlay so that my text isn't as white as kind of like this background right here. And so I'm gonna make the first color black and the second color my red color, just like this. And then I want to show you guys something. You can drag the location of each, and you'll see that I get more black. And then on this one, I get more orange. And so if I actually make them equals to each other, you'll see it's like a flat line. And this makes it really easy to see what the angle is. And so I can drag the angle wherever I want. And so I actually want it to be over there in the bottom corner, just like this. And then I'm going to move the orange all the way back to the corner. And I'm actually going to keep it mostly black. So something like this right here because you'll see that that orange part starts to hit right about here, which is on the other side of the T. That way contact is all the way on the black part. I think that looks a little better, but it still adds a little bit of flair of the orange that we have or this reddish color throughout the website. All right, other than that, that is the hero section. Let's go ahead and change these colors right here. It's really easy. All you gotta do is click on it and you can edit it. And so if you actually wanna change these numbers and emails and things like that, they're just icon lists. And so you click on each one of them and you can change the text that's in it right here and then you can click here and change the icon. So instead of a phone number, if you wanted to use an email, you could just search here and do an envelope and you'll find like an email symbol if you want, but I'm not gonna change that. All I'm gonna do is go to the style tab and then for the icon and the text, I'm gonna have to change both of the colors. So I've got the color, I'm gonna change to black for the icon and then for the text, I'll change the text color to black. And so now it's black on black and then what I'm gonna do is change the hover color to my red color. And I'll do the same thing on the icon. Hover color will be my red color. And so now when I hover over it, it does that black and red color. Next, what I'm gonna do is save myself some time. Instead of doing it individually, you can right click and say copy. And then you can right click again on this one and say paste the style. It's not gonna change the text. That would happen if I said paste. But if I say paste style, it's just gonna copy the style options from this tab onto this setting right here. And so I'm gonna do paste style and just like that, they also do the hover color. Perfect. So other than that, I think everything else looks fantastic. We've got our contact form right here and it's ready to go with a name, phone number, email, and message. And then they can click on submit right there. And we've got a map. If you guys ever wanna change this map setting, I'm gonna show you two things about it. So I'm gonna right click, or actually you can't right click on the map. So I'm gonna actually say edit with this little icon right here. And so now we're editing the Google Maps widget. You can change the zoom. So actually, let's go ahead and change this to Austin, Texas. All right, and it's gonna search Austin, Texas just like this. And then from here, I can change the zoom. So if I wanna zoom out more, or if I wanna zoom in more. And then I can change the height as well, which is basically just how high this map is, which I think 400 is fine. 
So now I'm gonna go back to the style tab and this is actually how they do that whole black and white fading to color. You'll go to the CSS filters right here and they're basically turning the saturation from zero and then if you go to the hover animation and edit it, uh, the saturation is 100%. And so if you actually wanna remove this, all you have to do is just go to the normal CSS filter and then just bring the saturation up and now you'll see that it's regularly saturated, or if you wanna like oversaturate it like this, and then every time you hover, it removes saturation, that's an option. Or if you want, you could have it completely blurred out, just like this, and then when they hover, it'll clarify and add color. There's tons and tons of different options that you can do there, but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Now I'm gonna click on update to save my work, and let's preview the changes. And to do that, again, we just click on the little eyeball icon right here. Perfect, so we've got this really cool image in the background with our contact text right up front. I think it looks fantastic, and I love that gradient style where it's kind of red over here and then fades to black. And then we've got our contact information as well as a form, and then also a map kind of showing them where we are. I think it looks fantastic. I really like that footer too. So I'm gonna close out of this guy and also close out of Elementor. So now that we've finished editing our homepage and the contact page, we can finally move on to step number eight, which is mobile responsiveness. Now I'm gonna go back to the homepage to change the mobile responsiveness first. So we'll go to the pages tab and open it up on a new one and then say homepage edit with Elementor right here. Now the reason that mobile responsiveness is so important, it's because that more than 50% of your traffic that's gonna be going to your website is gonna be people who are on the go looking at your website on their cell phone. I mean, how many times a day are you actually on your cell phone and going to websites to check out different things? So let's make sure that your website looks just as good on the mobile version as well as the desktop version. In order to do that, Elementor makes it really easy. All you gotta do is drop on down to the bottom corner here next to the update and preview button, we've got mobile responsive mode. Click on this guy, and now it's gonna make your website look like a cell phone screen, just like this, and you can already see that it looks completely unformatted. This looks terrible. I mean, god awful. So let's make sure that we change that right now. If we scroll on down, it looks like the rest of the website actually is decent. So we can see the About Me page collapsed correctly. So did the programs, hours of operation, training and rates. Training gallery, it looks like the accordion went vertical, so that's very helpful. Clients did okay, and then so did the testimonial section. Elementor is really good about automatically compressing all of your information into the mobile version as well. It's just every once in a while when you play with custom margins and padding, like we did on the hero section, you'll see a few issues. So let's go ahead and deal with them now. So the first one I'm gonna deal with is this text right here. If you guys remember at the very beginning, we added a whole bunch of padding on one side. So all we have to do is reset the margins and padding. One thing I wanna mention, anytime you see this little mobile icon right here, that means that you're only editing this on the mobile version. So anytime you see this little phone icon next to whatever you're about to edit, that means that whatever changes you make on this mobile version will not affect the desktop version whatsoever. So most of the time, the changes you make on the mobile version won't have any effect on the desktop. Only a few settings coincide with both of them. And so you have to kind of be careful. But for instance, if I'm gonna change the padding and margins on this on the mobile version, and we'll see in a second that it doesn't affect the desktop version. So in order to reset it, all you have to do is just click up and then back down, and it's gonna reset it back to its normal, you know, no margins. And that already fixed it dramatically, as you can see, because it's still going off of the desktop mode corrections that we did. So if I do this again for the padding, just to be sure, we'll make sure that everything is correct there. The next thing is on the column, if you guys remember at the beginning, we also put some padding over here on the left-hand side. And so we can just go to the advanced tab after clicking on this to edit it. And we'll reset the margin and the padding. And just like that, you can see that it already looks even better. Now it's at least centered in the page. So now let's just play with some text sizing and we're good to go. So I'm gonna edit the heading first, go to the style tab, and under typography, I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit until it takes up the entire page. So right, let's do these arrow keys right there. Perfect. So I think that's as big as it can get without having to drop down to the next line. So let's make this a little bit smaller too. So I'm gonna click on the style tab just like this and go to typography. And that's after clicking on it, of course. So now I'm editing this one and let's drop the size down a little bit. And if this one drops to the next line, I don't think it's that big of a deal. We're gonna do it based on how small it is. This is just personal preference. I actually kind of like it like this. 
Now let's reduce the size of the text right here. So I'm going to go to the Style tab, and under Typography, I can change the size, and so I'll make it a lot, a lot smaller, just like this. Maybe a little bit bigger so it's not too hard to read. And other than that, I think it looks great. The last thing I'm going to do is actually center this button. So I'm going to click on Edit right here to edit the button. And then under the Content tab, and we drop on down to Alignment, I'm going to change this to be centered. Now you'll see that I've got that little mobile icon, which means that when I change this to be centered, and now it is, it's not going to affect the desktop as well. So let's click on Update to save our work, and then see what happens when we go back to the desktop version. So I'm going to go back to responsive mode and click on it. And when I go back to the desktop, you'll see that it hasn't changed anything. The text size and padding and margins are all the same. And this button is still on the left hand side. It's not centered. So that is fantastic. We can go ahead and double check the rest of the website in mobile mode. So I'm going to click on that responsive button again. And we can scroll on down. I think that hero section compressed very nicely now that we made some changes. But everything else I think looks great. Perfect. So now let's go do the same thing for the contact page. So make sure that you clicked on update to save your work. We'll close out of this tab. And now that I'm back on the desktop, I'm going to open up the pages tab again. And then from here, click on edit with Elementor for the contact page. Perfect. And now let's click on the responsive mode. Now this whole page was a template. So I'm assuming that it's already compressed correctly. And I assumed right. If you scroll on through the contact page, everything compresses just fine. Uh, even the map is a little bit smaller, but it's still zoomed in on Austin, so that's good. Uh, the hours of operation and the contact form just stacked on top of each other, and then my contact section, or my hero section, compressed fantastic. So we actually don't have to do anything to the contact page. So I'm going to close out of this tab. Now that we've finished the entire website, let's go ahead and take a quick preview. Wow, this website is bold and still looks professional. I love the coloring, especially how this orange pops everywhere. I think it looks fantastic. And we scroll on through. Everything is easily accessible to the client and they've got this cool accordion style here. Nice, and then we also have a email subscription down at the bottom. All right, so we'll go back up to the top and go to the contact page and it'll open it up on a new tab. Oh. Good thing that we went and checked our work because it looks like my button still isn't set up, which is an easy fix. Let's go ahead and click on this customize button right here. I'm actually going to open it on a new tab. And then from here, to save us some time, you could click on header builder and then click on the button widget, or you can just hover over the contact button and click on the blue pencil, and it'll take you straight to the button. And right now, as you can see, the link is that default link. So let's just make sure that it takes you to the contact page. And the way we do that is we'll have to go to the dashboard open up pages and go to all pages. And then for the contact page right here, just click on view. All right, and now that we're on the contact page, we can click up here and copy and paste our hyperlink. So I'll close out of that tab, go back to the customize tab and for the contact button, paste in our URL. And I'll click publish. And now we can close out of this page and refresh. Perfect. And now when you're scrolling through the website and you come back, you can click on the contact and it'll take you to the contact form and it opens it up on a new tab. Looks great. For those of you who are interested in checking out the pro version of Astra, this is an extra step where I'm going to go into all of the additional features that the pro version provides. Astra Pro is an incredibly powerful tool that you can add to your arsenal. It's got everything that the free version has and much more. One of my favorite parts of Astro Pro is you now have access to all of the premium templates within the Starter Templates plugin. You can now click on the All tab and go straight down to the Premium button right here and now check out all of the different templates that you have. Each and every one of these has more pages than all of the free version as well as the fact that they just look way better. With Astro Pro, you can adjust all of the colors of your header, footer, your blog posts, your blog archives, and WooCommerce. Just like you can change the colors everywhere, you can also change the typography of everything on your website as well. You now have the Blog Pro, which lets you change everything about your blog posts. You can decide whether to show the date of the last time the post was edited. You can also change around everything on your blog posts, so you can change the fonts, the title colors, and everything. You can also change any margins and padding for your blog posts. You also have full customization control over your header builder and footer builder. You can make your header transparent like it is right now. You can also add a sticky header. 
you can add a mega menu to your header menu so that you can show lots more options and you can also categorize them into different columns. You can even show a template that you created in Elementor as one of the navigation menu options. You can get really creative by adding a whole bunch of widgets to your footer and changing them around. You can also play with their layout as well as edit them individually. You also get a whole lot of options when it comes to editing your WooCommerce store that's built into your website. You can go to the product catalog and you can change the layout of the website so that the products are laid out horizontal instead of vertical. You can change the order of the title, category, and ratings. And then you can also change the padding as well as the pagination and color of everything. You can even change the fonts. Not only do you get access to premium support where you can submit different tickets and have some help with your website, you also have access to all of their teaching documents and tutorials. They have info on how to use each and every part of their program. All right, guys, that was my tutorial on how to make a website with Astra. The team over at Astra are launching new templates every week. You can request a template from them directly by visiting the link that I'm gonna leave in the description below. And maybe your request will be added in the next launch. I hope you all were able to follow along and have the website of your dreams. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.